you got me. When I realized that Big Deadly Snake had bit Manny, it was like a dagger in my heart. This was a huge fang viper that injected everything he had into Manny. Give me the tongs, give me the snake tongs. Let's go, we gotta move fast. Either we get this guy to a hospital or he's gonna die. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. South Texas. The area is huge and vast. The terrain is unbelievable. You have a wide variety of habitats. So we just get into South Texas. We're there to hook up with one of the best guides in Texas, uh, Buck Medley. And we're all excited about this adventure that we're going on. Uh, Buck had already told us about these huge alligators, these huge alligator gar and also the very large western diamondback rattlesnakes that they've got there in South Texas. I had seen Manny on several alligator shows, shark shows. I knew his reputation was extreme. So when I had the chance to work with him and actually do some filming, man, I just jumped at the chance. It's like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Down here in South Texas, I mean, I've got everything that he needs. Giant gators, giant gar, big hogs, huge snakes. I mean, it was a perfect environment for him. And when I talked to him on the phone, he said he'd never even been to South Texas. So I go, man, you got to get down here. This is, this is like South Africa without leaving America. Everything here is huge. It bites. You know, it's, it's a deadly game down here. And all of these are, are perfect subjects for Savage Wild. This here is a mesquite flat. It's got mesquite trees everywhere. It's got prickly pear cactus. Uh, there's tons of wildlife out here. There's deer, there's javelinas, there's wild hogs, there's mountain lions, there's coyotes. So it's the very first morning and we're out shooting. Skies are a little overcast, uh, day's going great. We're getting all of these wonderful pieces to build around this first show, which is gonna be about the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. And South Texas has probably the largest and meanest Western Diamondback Rattlesnakes found anywhere in the United States. What I really like to find in this area is a western diamondback rattlesnake. This area is ideal for them. The western diamondback is the second largest rattlesnake in North America, and Texas has the largest western diamondbacks around. I've never seen a western diamondback in the wild. I'm looking forward to finding one, and I'm gonna keep searching this area uh, till I find one. One of the things we were doing while we were there is looking for the type of food that the Western Diamondback might be interested in. Uh, there are stick nest rats. It's a very uh, specific prey of the Western Diamondback rattlesnake. So Manny was giving us great info and great on-camera pieces about the stick nest rat. This is the burrow of a stick nest rat. Uh, it builds its nest in here to protect itself from coyotes, bobcats, such predators but it has a deadly enemy. The Western Diamondback can slither right in here and find him in there. It is the favorite food of the Western Diamondback. We were also finding cottontail rabbits. It's another prime food of the Western Diamondback rattlesnake. Rabbits, one of the best foods for the Western Diamondback. This area is awesome, there are rabbits everywhere. We're moving through the terrain. Manny's doing a wonderful job painting the picture of the habitat that the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake prefers. Uh, 
So as we're moving through this terrain, we come across a magnificent Western Diamondback rattlesnake, five, six feet long, as big around as your bicep. Uh, we all took one look at it and knew that this was a powerful, dangerous snake. Uh, not anything you would ever want to get bit by, that's for sure. Manny was, was very comfortable with, uh, with the possibility of working with it, so we set up. Uh, Manny uh, started to approach the snake. You know, everything was going as it always goes on Savage Wild. We all believe in Manny so much, and Manny's got that ultimate confidence. We're all basically going through the same routine that we always do with Savage Wild. But as he goes to pin this snake, this snake was so fast and it was so powerful, Manny just was not able to pin it. Once the crew realized what had happened, nobody panicked. It was just get Manny to the hospital as quickly as possible. You got me. Down here in South Texas, when I'm guiding, you bring snake boots, you keep your hands off the ground, I wear these big 18-inch snake boots like this. I really had a lot of fear for Manny's life. This snake it was capable of killing a man. To the guy, let's get going, come on. Get Manny to the hospital as quickly as possible. Every second counts. I've been snake bitten, I told everybody it's really bad. Give me 50 vials of anti-venom, I mean, dump it in me. So as we're moving through the terrain, we come across a magnificent Western Diamondback rattlesnake. Probably five, six feet long, big around as your bicep. And I took one look at this snake and I knew that is a seriously dangerous, very powerful animal. And because we're working with Manny Puig, we're all confident it's gonna be another great episode of Savage Wild. And I don't have any problem finding this one. He's an awesome specimen but uh, he must have heard my footsteps and he's rattling away, so I gave away his position. Actually, the rattle is a defense for him. To keep animals from stepping on him, they rattle that way. I gotta make sure he doesn't run into the cactus. I got him right where I want him. I just gotta make sure he calms down so I can get around him. Manny maneuvers around the snake a few times. Actually pets it on the head. And uh, we're feeling, okay, he's got this under control. I'm running camera one. I've got the wide angle lens. I'm pretty much over Manny's shoulder. And as he approaches the snake, I move in close. Cuete is on camera two. I was running camera two, and I was very tight into the snake. Uh, the, the snake filled the entire frame. And as he reaches in to pin its head, This snake was so lightning fast, it was so powerful that everything just went crazy. And I could see Manny did get control of it, but my heart was racing and I was really hoping that he hadn't been bit, but I couldn't really tell. So when I saw Manny's hand reach in and grab the snake by the, by the head, just, just behind the head, that snake just started moving and twisting and it was such a powerful animal. And I knew that Manny was in trouble. I just didn't want to believe it. I was just waiting for him to come up and say, okay, here's a snake and bring it up. And instead I heard him say, I got hit and it just, my heart sank to my stomach. When we came upon the snake, I mean, I knew it was a monster. And Manny said, well, I can catch that snake. The guy's a professional. I mean, he never misses a click. So as I watched him, his methods and his techniques, I knew he was gonna get, be able to get it done. So as he went for the grab, the snake was so huge, he got the grab perfect. I mean, the snake's head was this big. And the grab was perfect, but the snake was so strong that uh, it twisted in his hand and actually sunk the fang into one finger and into his hand. And man, at that second, I knew this was gonna be a fight for his life because the snake was just giant and the venom amounts were just huge. I mean, it had to pump everything it had into him. And he calmly looks me in the eye and says, you got me. 
and a chill ran down my spine. It was like being kicked in the chest, and I knew what Manny was in for. He was in serious trouble, and we are a long way from a hospital. We're 50, 60 miles from the hospital. You got bit? Yeah. And from that moment on, I knew it was critical that either we get this guy to a hospital or he's gonna die. I mean, this wasn't a little snake bite that when you're dove hunting or just out walking around, he gets you, you know, cause that's just a quick strike and the amount of venom is just enough to kill like a small rat or a rabbit. This was a huge fang viper that injected everything he had into Manny. Give me the tongs, give me the snake tongs. Let's go, we gotta move fast. Once we realized what had happened, our main concern, the entire crew, was get Manny to the hospital as quickly as possible. Every second counts. To the guy, let's get going. Come on, Buck, I need you to pick up all this stuff here. Leave it all here, I'm gonna run you back to the truck. Come on, just So we get control of the snake, we get Manny on the ATV, and now we're rushing on the ATV to get to my truck. From the second he got bit, I mean, every second was critical. We. I looked at his hand, we jumped in my buggy, I mean, we were miles from anywhere, and my buggy, we were flying, jumping rivers. We get in my truck, I'm calling 911, Buck Medley's driving, we're driving 110 to 130 miles an hour down Texas country roads. I drove 130 miles an hour, I had all the DPS, all the, all the cops, everybody, they were letting us go, they seen us going by, they were like, wow! 911 has alerted the police, they've alerted the sheriff's department, and they have basically cleared the streets in town. So as we get into town, they told us don't slow down, just keep on rolling as fast as you can, because we told them that this was a severe bite by a big Western Diamondback. I've been snake bitten, I told everybody it's really bad. Give me 50 balls of anti-venom. I mean, dump it in me. As soon as he walked into the ER room, they said that he might have a possibility of losing his hand. He could lose his hand, and I about sank to my knees. I was not ready for that. You got me. When I realized that big, deadly snake had bit Manny, it was like a dagger in my heart. I really had a lot of fear for Manny's life. This snake was capable of killing a man. Hey, let's get going. Come on. Buck, I need you to pick up all this stuff. Manny's one of a kind. We had to save his life, and that's all I cared about at that moment was saving his life. I've been snake bitten. I told everybody it's really bad. Give me 50 vials of anti-venom. I mean, dump it in me. By the time we got to the hospital, the anti venom was prepared. It's a huge snake bite area, so the doctors were on alert. They had the anti venom ready. And, you know, there was a couple of times when I looked in the back seat and I saw Manny, and I was like, oh my God, this guy, he may not make it, man. I saw his eyes roll back in his head. So we rushed Manny into the emergency room. They're already set up, they've got the Crofab anti venom ready to go. They get Manny on a, on a table and they start helping him right away. And South Texas is a place that's really experienced at dealing with snake bite. They get 50 snake bites every season at least. So it's not something they haven't seen before, but this is a really, really bad bite. So as the emergency room staff is working on Manny, the doctor gets there and he evaluates Manny. He steps over and he's talking to me and asks me where it happened and how long it took us to get to the hospital. And he looks at me and he says, he could lose his hand. And I about sank to my knees when he said that because I just wasn't really ready for that. And, and I don't know if Manny heard it or not, but Manny's, Manny's fully aware of how bad the bite is at this time. They said that he might have a possibility of losing his hand. And I mean, that, that in itself can just take everything out of you. That can ruin your life, even if you lose a finger. But when they said a hand and then I heard that, I was scared for Manny's hand. You know, everything he does in life and even his life. I mean, at that point, I didn't know, I was just, it just floored me. This was just overwhelming news for me. I mean, we knew it was a bad snake bite, but the possibility of losing a hand or even a finger was, was just a terrible, terrible thing to think about. Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Third day after getting bit by a Western Diamondback Rattler. It was between five and six feet long. Uh, it put a lot of venom in me. The pain has been horrific. 
Um, but just now the, the swelling's getting down. They've given me, I don't know, maybe 28 bottles of antivenom. And I'm just waiting it out you know, to, uh, to heal this, you know. Uh, it's my second bite. I got bitten when I was 17 by a pygmy rattlesnake. And this is my second bite. This is like 10 times the other snake. Though. This, this is a horrific bite. From the time it bit me, immediately it was like uh, the, the burning sensation, the swelling, and you can feel the destructive power of the venom. It's like, like somebody's just eating your life with a blowtorch, like they're just burning you through. It's like there's no way out, and you just... Uh, the pain is just... Uh, you know, it's indescribable. But you're gonna be okay. In good shape. Uh, you know, I'm gonna be okay. It's gonna... I'm gonna have to rehab it, you know. Gonna, I mean, it, it ain't done yet, that's what I've been doing. So I'm in the process of healing right now. Um, comfortable at the moment. But uh, this is getting bit by a rattlesnake, especially a big one like that, it's just misery. It was an enormous Western Diamondback rattler that bit me. You know, with huge fangs. I, I knew I was in for it. Once I got bit and I felt the venom go into me, I mean, there's enough venom inside of me to kill me. This Western Diamondback unloaded everything I had into me. And the minute that snake bit me, I had in the back of my mind that I was gonna lose my finger. As soon as I got bit, I knew the world caved in on me. It was like the worst nightmare. I felt the incredible amount of venom injected in me. I knew there was no shortcut around it. I, I was in for hell. And on the way to the hospital with Buck and Robin, uh, Buck was driving 120 miles an hour to get me to the hospital. And the pain was, I could see the swelling just go like this by the second. And I'm like, if I don't get treated right away, I'm thinking, uh, that snake put enough venom in me to kill me. 13 days later, I'm still in pain. I still feel it. I still got all, you know, the, the damage there. And I look at it, there's no shortcut in it. You know, okay, I'm alive, but the, the swelling has gone down. My arm looked like a, like a football all the way to here. It was all this was swollen all the way down here. And now, uh, days later, I'm still dealing with it. I gotta soak it in water peroxide. I gotta watch the wound very carefully. Gotta be real careful with it. Uh, I don't think it's personal. The Western Diamondback is part of the wilderness, it's part of the ecosystem. It's very necessary out there. And like I say, if you venture out into the wild, uh, it is what it is. You know, it's not a playground, it's a dangerous place. Accept it the way it is and take responsibility for your own actions out there. Be real careful. It's a beautiful, wonder, wonderful place, but it is a savage wild and extremely dangerous. For a man to recover from a snake bite like that, it's, a, it's miraculous. The guy is, he's tough. But uh, I mean, he's been bit by big alligators, lots of sharks and two big reptiles and he's still going. There's no way to put him down. You're not gonna stop Manny. And uh, he's gonna be in the savage wild forever. Hey Manny, how you doing? Good, good, how you doing? I'm doing great, just checking in to see how the hand is healing. Well, uh, the hand's good. Um, well, my brother-in-law came over yesterday, uh, he saw my hand and he freaked out about it, he took me to the hospital. Uh, well, to make it short, uh, I'm gonna have to have my finger removed. I mean, it's, I'm okay with it, it took me about two seconds to decide on it. Uh, it's the doctor said it was gonna handicap me, so I really, you know, I'm not worried about the cosmetic. I just want use for my hand. So I told the doctor, yeah, go ahead and cut it off. So I'm waiting to get a point and get it cut off. Manny, that's just devastating news to hear. I was really hoping that you're going to be able to keep that finger. Uh, Rob, l listen, don't worry about it. Um, we're gonna keep working. I just gotta get over this. Uh, understand it that uh, from the minute that snake bit me, I had at the back of my mind that I was gonna lose my finger. I mean, the damage was so bad, it was such a big snake, and uh, you know, if they would've saved my finger, 
I'm gonna have a, a handicapped finger that can't function and it's gonna get in my way. I'm gonna go grab something and it's gonna get caught in the way. So I'd rather have as much in my hand as possible and you know have the finger out of the way than have the finger bothering me. Okay, Manny, I understand. I know it won't be long before we're in the field again. Take care, keep me posted on the surgery. Okay, definitely. Bye now. That was not a good phone call. Two months and a half a finger later, I am well on my way to recovery. I'm also feeling a little stronger every day. Keep in mind, I was bitten in the hand. Your eyes cannot see the damage the venom did as it went throughout my body. Uh, it literally knocked the daylights out of me. The coastal mountain ranges of Southern California are among the wildest places in North America. These hills are full of wildlife. Mountain lion, black bear, coyote, deer, bobcat, and lord of the reptiles. Civilization has pushed deep into these coastal ranges, putting people, their homes, and pets in close contact with one of North America's most dangerous snakes, the super toxic Southern Pacific Rattler. I like rattlesnakes. Uh, they're hunters just like me. They use poison arrows to incapacitate their prey. They belong here. They keep rodents in check. They're good for the environment. I want to experience them firsthand and compare them to other rattlesnakes. See uh, they're more docile, more aggressive, and learn as much as I can about them. The thing about looking for rattlesnakes, they're so tough to find. Uh, when you're not looking for them, they're in your front yard, crossing the road, but when you're out here looking in your caves, looking for them, they're so difficult to find. There's so many places for them to hide in. They're such a difficult animal to hunt. The savage wild is everywhere. Even this little creek, there are big predatory bugs in here. I'm following a creek bed. Rattlesnakes like water and shade. It's a hot day, so this is my best chance. But I first come across a rare find, a coastal rosy boa. This is a coastal rosy boa. It's a rare snake, man. This is unbelievable to find. This snake makes such a good pet that has been caught and caught by people and reduced in numbers, and it's extremely rare. It's very gentle, it's beautiful, it's like jewelry. It's a boa, it's an actual American boa in the same family as the anaconda and the boa constrictor. It is a constrictor. It likes to come out in the cool of the day. As the night settles in, that's when they come out. And right here, I notice that his tail has been bit off, the tip of it. It's already healed, but uh, apparently it was attacked by something, and it got away. I'm gonna put him down, and hopefully he doesn't get eaten by something or caught by somebody, because we need a lot more of these in the Savage Wild. Southern Pacific Rattler. 
This is the most common rattlesnake in Southern California. Look how well camouflaged it is. And if you don't have a trained eye, you can put your hand on it, your foot right on it. You're gonna be really, really sorry if you get bit by the snake. It has hemotoxin and neurotoxin poison. If you make it to the hospital in time, you'll probably live. They're gonna have you, give you a ton of anti-venom. I'm gonna go real gentle on it. I like to keep my hands underneath the rattlesnake and touch it in a very non-threatening way. I don't want to agitate it. This is a very difficult thing to do and extremely dangerous. You know, I'm fig figuring out his personality. Every one of them has a different personality. Every encounter that I have will be different. And I do not underestimate the snake. This is an average size Pacific rattler. It's not the biggest rattlesnake in North America, but it makes up for it in how deadly this snake is. Okay, if it's rattles going off, that means the rattler is getting nervous. I'm extremely cautious around uh, the Southern Pacific rattlesnake. I don't want to get bit by anything, but especially this. My adventure in the wild and rugged coastal mountains of Southern California has only just begun. In my search for the most dangerous venomous snake in North America, the super toxic Southern Pacific Rattler has already led me to my first encounter. Their venom is lethal, but are they more aggressive, more prone to bite than other rattlesnakes? I'm sure to find out. These things are deadly. They're sticks of dynamite. I'm hiking through heavy wilderness in California's rugged and beautiful coastal mountains, hunting for what many believe is the most dangerous venomous snake in North America, the super toxic Southern Pacific Rattler. Its venom contains both neurotoxin and hemotoxin, attacking the nervous system and also destroying the blood and tissues. But is this snake more aggressive or is it just another rattlesnake packing a more powerful punch? As far as I can go into these hills, there are houses. I don't have a problem with that. They want to live in the wilderness, so do I. But I guarantee you that they have had multiple encounters with a Southern Pacific rattlesnake. All animals need water, so there's water here and there's plenty of cover for rattlesnakes, so there's a good chance there might be some rattlers in this area. I'm glad he's trying to rattlesnake off. Uh, some of the Pacific rattlers do not rattle when you approach them. That makes them extremely dangerous. You gotta, you gotta, you're not looking this way. You have to look where you're stepping on, where you're walking. This is a death trap. Pacific Rattler. It is so dark. It's amazing. You know, in the same area, they can vary so much in color. Every one is different and a different personality. This one, it's musking away. I can smell it. Let come down. Every 
be kind. The snake picks up the tongue, it's tasting the air. You gotta stay super focused on this. Yeah, it comes out the body. I'm gonna keep, keep it facing away from me. This snake is crazy. It's been trying to bite me since I, since I approached it. Uh, not like the other one, it calmed down quicker. Now, I'm doing this. I know what I'm doing, but this is a good way to get bit. Do not attempt to do this. And if you do get bit accidentally walking through the woods, forget about this and the tourniquets and all that crazy stuff. Just call 911 and go to the hospital immediately. If you don't, you could end up with an amputation, uh, severe damage to your body, and even death. So just get to the hospital right away and stay calm. See, right now, uh, this rat is looking at me and is rattling away. I'm uh, having a hard time calming him down. It, it got different personalities. This is a completely different individual. It looks different, even though it's the same species. It's got a different color and its personality is different. So every animal encounter is going to be completely different. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, this guy is focused on me nonstop, trying to lay its fangs into me. As I travel deeper into the coastal mountains of California, I'm encountering one snake after another, two Southern Pacific rattlers, and even a coastal rosy boa. These hills have fangs, and I'm already pushing the envelope of safety. But I need to understand this rattlesnake, and I wonder what encounters lie ahead, and will I have a date with disaster? I'm pushing further and further into the rugged and tangled wilderness of California's coastal mountains in search of North America's most dangerous snake, the Southern Pacific Rattler. The venom of this snake is so deadly, one bite and I might not survive the hike out. But I'm fascinated by them. This snake is known for biting first and then rattling. But does this mean it's more aggressive? I need to find out. I carefully search every crevice and cave that looks promising, but this snake always seems to turn up in the most unexpected places. Pacific Rattler. I'm gonna try to see if I can get ease up on him before he runs for cover. The minute he hears me pounding, he's already picked me up. Unbelievable, from back there. He starts to rattle the minute he hears me pound. And everyone is different. This guy has a complete rattle. He has not lost his button. So, that's all the rattles he's made in his life, he's carrying them right now. That is so interesting. Okay, he's holding his ground, which is perfect. You know, I'd rather have him instead of trying to run the cover over there, this is perfect. Touch her head. This is from behind. You might not think so, but rattlesnakes like water. They're excellent swimmers. This snake retreats into the stream rather than stand its ground and attack. He's up high right now, ready to strike. I'm just being real careful. Real careful with him. It's a good strike. Let's see if we pick up heat over there, get him to turn around. <sighs> yeah. 
This guy made me nervous. When I'm doing this, I gotta be real careful with that thing right there. A lot of people get bit when they throw it outside your mouth. mountain ranges of Southern California are infested with these deadly snakes. I have only hiked in a few miles and already have encountered three, each one with a totally different coloration and temper. I'm learning a great deal about this super toxic predator, but these snakes perceive me as a threat. So are they being defensive? I need more encounters to truly answer the question. Are they more aggressive than other rattlers? These are its poison arrows right here. I'm hiking deep into California's coastal mountains in search of North America's most dangerous snake, the super toxic Southern Pacific Rattler. A bite by this snake is devastating, attacking your entire nervous system as well as your blood and tissues. But are they more aggressive than other rattlers? I can't allow myself to get bit, but my curiosity and thirst for knowledge pushes me on. But in the back of my mind, I wonder, will the next encounter be my last? This is the type of terrain where you can easily get bit. I can't even see my feet. The brush is so thick, a rattlesnake is going to hide all over in here. Uh, most people think you got to hear the rattle first before they strike. That's not the case, and especially the Pacific rattlesnake is known to strike first and then rattle. On the other side of the ridge, I descend into a steep canyon. The beauty of this place amazes me and its prime rattlesnake habitat. Everything they need is here. Food, shelter, and water. And as I near the bottom, I spot yet another Southern Pacific. Its coloration blends perfectly with a red and brown granite. This new encounter will add to what I have learned about the behavior of this super toxic snake. I'm gonna get around this back, this back side of it. He's got plenty of cracks to come out in here. There he is. Keep in mind that this rattlesnake's venom is hemotoxin and neurotoxin. Apart from it destroying your tissue and getting blood blisters, bleeding out of your nose, bleeding out of your eyes, and all that, you also get twitching, convulsions, your body starts to shake like this, and it, it, it destroys your nervous system, shuts you down, you won't be able to breathe, it's attacking the heart, your tissues, it's killing you from every angle. There's been an increase of bites by the Southern Pacific rattlesnake here in Southern California, and I believe it's because the people are encroaching on their world, on their environment. There's more people living out here, more houses. This is a dangerous animal. Most people, when they see it, they fear it. They're just gonna hit it with a stick and kill it. Uh, I don't, 
I, I think it's part of this environment. They belong out here. They control rodent populations. of the Southern Pacific rattlesnake is a typical rattlesnake, like the Eastern and Western Diamondback, the timber, but it packs a lethal venom. And these hills are infested. <laughs> Aliens have landed in the Everglades. Not little green men, but 20-foot snakes alien to Florida. I am deep in the swamps, hunting what many consider Florida's latest nightmare, the python. On my hunt, I encounter many other surprises. These huge snakes are legendary killers. I'm here to see for myself how dangerous a wild python really is. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant, man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. Welcome to the jungle. We're here in the hammocks of South Florida. Lately, you've been hearing a lot of stuff in the media, a lot of exaggerations about an invasion of pythons. Uh, people going hysterical. They think the pythons are gonna eat uh, their children, their dogs, they're gonna destroy the world. I'm gonna give you my take on it. Yeah, the pythons are here and they're here to stay. But how, what impact they have? When an invasive species hits an area, it usually reproduces and grows to large numbers and then it finally settles in. I mean, yeah, pythons eat everything, but guess what? Alligators eat pythons. Uh, the wild hogs eat the baby pythons. Uh, so at the same time, the pythons will eat deer, hogs, and all kinds of animals down here. A lot of the animals are gonna start learning how to prey on the young pythons especially, and control the numbers. Plus, people are also gonna be hunting them and killing them left and right. We're not gonna wipe them out, but they're here to stay. You might as well start wearing python belts and python purses and all kinds of goodies made from python. There are three types of pythons out here. The most numerous is the Burmese python, then you have uh, the reticulate python, and you also have the African rock python. All three of them grow to over 20 feet long. They're deadly. Any of them can uh, eat a dog, eat a deer, a small child. I mean, you really have to be careless to be, you know, leave a little kid in the woods, you know, sleeping out here so a python will eat them. But possibly, yeah, they can do all that. It is a dangerous predator, and we should be smart enough in the woods to walk around here and safely avoid them. I'll tell you, you don't want to have a picnic out here. This place is perfect for deadly snakes and very dangerous for people. There's a bandit water snake right over there. I'm gonna try to get near him. More than likely, he's gonna dive into the deeper water. It's gonna be a tough one for me to grab. The snake is very fast and very aquatic. It'll dive into the deeper water.
He may not be venomous, but I won't let him bite me. Bandit water snakes are very aggressive. Bandit water snake, and it's really mad. I'm very focused on looking for pythons, but all snakes are cool. This is a bandit water snake. Uh, very fast, very aggressive, very aquatic. I can't believe I caught him. I, I can't believe I got him before he sunk because they normally drop down in the deep water and they're gone. They disappear in the undergrowth. I'm just letting it calm down little by little. See, it's got his head flattened still, so the snake is still mad. Get a little while, it'll calm down. He's looking at my hand, and I, if he comes up on my other hand, he's gonna bite it. So I keep his attention. Okay, we're gonna get a good look at him, and I'm gonna let him go. I already checked them out. Let me go look for some bigger snakes. Snake musk all over me. Nice. It is nearly impossible to find a python out here, but some biologist friend of mine told me that in this area some have been taken. So right now it's kind of bright out here, so I'm gonna go into the cypress head where it's nice and shaded in there. My instinct tells me I should stick to the cypress and to the oak forest and all that where it's shaded. I tend to walk softly because snakes cannot hear, but they can pick up your vibrations if you stomp on the ground. They pick it up right here. Another thing, uh, small pythons are quicker. The larger pythons move slower. It's a bulkier, larger animal, so it doesn't travel as fast. Right now, I want to get deep into the cypress head. This is the outskirts inside there. It's, the trees are higher over there, so it means there's going to be more shade in there moisture on the ground. There's a bear. There's a bear right over there staring at me. This is, I want you to see it. This is extremely dangerous. This will eat a python, but it's dangerous to us too. This is one of the animals that loves to eat python. That's a large female black bear over there. So, you know, this overpopulation of pythons, these animals and other animals like them, alligators and so forth, and, and even the babies are eaten by everything. The wildlife here will put a check on them. That's my theory. I'm gonna see if I can get a little closer. Not too close. I don't wanna get mauled by a bear. Awesome bear. Wow. This is what will kill a python. If a bear finds a python, it'll make a smorgasbord out of it. So the python is invading this area, but understand there are plenty of cre creatures out here that'll eat it, like the bear, the alligator, uh, the wild hogs will eat the babies. You know, it's not as big a threat as people think it is. It'll eat some animals, and a lot of animals are gonna eat it. It's good meals for all these animals. Man, it's so exciting to find a bear out here. This is this is an incredible place. Well, what a jungle. Uh, there's rattlesnakes, there's bears, there's panthers, alligators, it's just everything out here. Coyotes, just tons of wildlife out here. This is as wild as it gets. And now we got giant snakes to add to the mix. We got huge pythons. So it's another devastating predator in the area. So this is Predator Haven.
We're getting too close to that bear, and that bear is getting aggressive. To me, that's more dangerous than a python. You know, a python, you gotta step into its, its, its where he's laying. You gotta step right in there so he can grab you. This thing can run after you and catch you. That python's not gonna chase you. You have to step into its ambush layer. Let's, let's back out of here before we become a casualty. and human out here. Everybody thinks the pythons are just all over the place. No, I've been out here for hours. I'm in this uh, swamp out here and then looking everywhere. This is difficult, difficult work. The pythons are not that many like they think they are, you know, in such a huge area. Yeah, maybe thousands in an enormous area. Uh, they're hiding anywhere. They're, they're, they're camouflage. They're, they're designed so you can't see them. That's what these animals are. Masters of camouflage and ambush. The python is proving to be an elusive animal. I am on the hunt for a new super predator that has invaded the Florida Everglades. A 20 foot long nightmare, the python. I have been combing the jungle for hours and still no sign of pythons, but I have encountered other wildlife, including a female black bear. The day is hot and the jungle is thick but I am determined to find a python. What will kill you faster? A large rattlesnake, a large cottonmouth, or a large python? The large python, I'm talking 20 feet or plus, can kill a man in two minutes. It'll grab a hold of a person, squeeze him so tight, it's like a giant tourniquet on his body. His blood cannot flow. His guts may come out of his butthole, the eyes will pop out of his uh, socket, your eyes will pop out, it'll squeeze your tongue out, it'll turn you black and blue and crush your bones in your shoulder and stuff you like that so they can eat you. Two minutes, they can kill you a lot faster than a rattlesnake or a cottonmouth. You guys, be careful around here, be careful what you walk on. Right there, look, 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 look. It's right there, right there. Oh, there's this head, it's over here. Where? It's over here, it's over here. Get, 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 around, get in front, get in front. I'm gonna get in front of him. He's gonna get into his brush over here. I, I don't see anything. Uh, right I don't here, right here, right here. He's right there. See him? He's right here, right here. Well, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You can walk over here and literally step on him. Right now, he's picking me up with his, with his uh, heat sensors. This is an Eastern Diamondback, a big one. It brings bad memories to me. I got bit by his cousin in Texas, a Western Diamondback, and I do not want to head and grab this, this snake. This is extremely, extremely dangerous. I cannot, cannot take another hit. He can strike two thirds his length. So I gotta be careful he doesn't get me up here. Got his tail. I got my spear in the way in case he turns around. Like right there. Get this I wanna kinda like lift him to show him. Look at that. Awesome. Eastern Diamondback. This is the largest rattlesnake in North America. The second is a Western Diamondback. Both of them are extremely, extremely deadly. Uh, the Western likes a desert climate out there, but this is a creature of the pine lands, swamp lands, and hammocks of Florida. They're actually, they're not that common anymore. They're quite rare. 
This is an incredible find. Okay, the idea is to keep a face away from me so he doesn't pick me up with his heat, with his heat sensors. See, I keep turning him this way. Now, the way to get bit, I usually go for the head. I'm not gonna go for the head now. I am not gonna do that. That's, I got bit twice by rattlesnakes and it's both times I was going for his head. Sticking out to his body and tail like this, it's dangerous as all get out, but it's a lot safer than what I normally do. As beautiful as this creature is, there's nothing worse than getting bit by rattlesnake. Look at that. That's, that's from his cousin. So I cannot, cannot afford to get bit by uh, another rattlesnake, ever. I've been losing parts left and right. I almost died. Okay, oh, he's getting mad. See the rattle? Whoa, he's looking at me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put him down and both are gonna go away. I just wanted to. I just can't get over the beauty of this animal, man. I can't. It'll be a long time before I see another one. Okay. I'm so shook up, man. I'm like, my adrenaline is still flowing from my body. I, I cannot believe I was hands on. I, I had to. I, you know, it was my instinct. I had to grab that snake. Understand that there's enough venom and that diamond back to kill 30 men. That is a massive, large Eastern diamond back. That is deadly, deadly. And not only what the pain that I went through when I got bit by the Western diamond back, its cousin, they're very similar. The Western is more grayish, lighter color. The Eastern is darker. That's the main thing. And the Eastern grows a little bit bigger, but both of them are gnarly. Uh, understand the pain and the swelling and the tissue damage months and months of healing. It's been over a year. My hand is still uh, stiff. It's still not well. I mean, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive and I have a hand. Uh, one bite, especially after taking that hit, uh, the anti-venom will probably not work on me that good anymore. And it could be devastating. I mean, I just assume, you know, die if I got bit by it. I can't go through that again. That agony and that pain. Cannot. Hey guys, just be careful. See where I'm walking? Walk exactly where I'm walking. Don't step here, don't step there, because I haven't seen what's there and I haven't seen what's here. Let me look around real careful first and just follow. If there's a snake is in the way, I'm gonna step there first. So just follow my trail, man. I, I, I mean, I don't wanna be every 10 minutes telling somebody to watch out, watch out, watch out, man. You guys get it on, you know? And don't step on the ground hard, man. Don't move, stop, 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 stop. Don't move. Everybody sit still. Okay, can you, do you guys see him? Over there. He's in there, man. Okay, he's starting to move, he's starting to move. So get, get, come on, come on. Come on. Look at this, it's, it's a tick. It's a tick of the python, look at this. Man, whoa. Whoa. Real careful, it's gonna strike. This is a very mean snake. <sighs> Let out the scent, man. When they get excited, they put out a scent. I don't want to get bit by it. It's got hooked like teeth. He may not be big enough to swallow me, but he can hurt me severely though. What a powerful snake. See what it does? Don't worry, it'll start to wrap on you. Now take it, Retix can grow to over 20 feet long. These have eaten people before. When this thing gets right now, it'll eat raccoons, just about anything, you know, medium-sized animals, foxes, anything like that. But when this red tick gets big, uh, it'll take down a deer or a hog. 
but if the bear gets a hold of it, one this size, it'll take it down. This will be a baby hog though. Tissing. See the teeth there? Hook like teeth? Right there, you don't want it, those things will catch you. Look at those hooks right there, look at them all. Wow, they're all aimed backwards. So when it constricts the spray, this jaw is loose. It'll come apart and it'll stretch out and just swallow everything. First it'll kill it, never eats anything alive. And then, very muscular, man. This is just, you feel his muscles, man. This is a beautiful, beautiful python, man. I mean, to me, it's just another cool animal in the Florida woods, you know, regardless of what scientists and media are saying. I mean, it's an opportunity for me to come out here and capture one of these. I'm gonna keep this snake. Uh, I'm gonna give it to a biologist friend of mine so he can check out, learn as much as he can from it. Uh, for me, I, would, I don't care, I would let it go, but I know, you know, a lot of people be upset if I let it go. Everybody's trying to get them out of here, not bring them in. So I'm gonna definitely keep this one. This is savage, this is wild, man. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. You see how I'm gonna have a hard time carrying them out of here because I'm gonna have to wear them out of here. <laughs>